إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله So we know what Islam says about polytheism, about shirk. Allah Ta'ala said, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ Indeed, whoever associates partners with Allah, then Allah has made paradise haram for them. He has forbidden paradise for them. And their abode shall be the fire, and there shall not be for the wrongdoers any helpers. And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, "Man mata yushriku billahi shay'a dakhla nar." Whoever dies associating any partners with Allah is going to enter the hellfire. So the Quran and the narrations of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Warn against polytheism with the most severe warning. But despite this, we find Muslims falling into grave worship and various acts of polytheism. And we don't pretend like this does not exist. For this reason, the scholars address this issue continuously. Likewise, we know what Islam says about racism. Allah Ta'ala said, يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. O mankind, indeed we created you from a male and a female, and we made you into nations and tribes, so that you may get to know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah. Are those that have the most piety, and the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Ya ayyuhan nas, ala inna rabbakum wahid, wa inna abakum wahid." O mankind, indeed your Lord is one, and your father, meaning Adam, is one, and indeed there is no virtue for the Arab over the non-Arab, and there is no virtue for the non-Arab over the Arab. And there is no virtue for the red over the black, and there is no virtue for the black over the red, except based upon piety. But despite the narrations and the verses from the Quran prohibiting racism, there are still some Muslims who are racist. So we're not going to pretend like racism does not exist amongst the Muslims. For this reason. This issue also has to be dealt with. Now, to give you a bit of background on me, I grew up in the '70s in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, Raleigh, North Carolina, is around 53% white and 29% black. The area of Raleigh I grew up in, Southeast Raleigh. Is eighty five percent black, and it's a real nice area. Very nice homes, schools, etc. Of course, growing up in the seventies, the schools were integrated, and I also I served in the United States Army as an army sergeant, and of course, the army is integrated. So the only place I saw segregation. Was the church, not by law but in practice, to the point that I never saw a white man step foot in the church my entire life, not one. And I only saw one white woman come to the church one Sunday, once, and it was such a big deal. We talked about it for the rest of the day. So when you hear about Islam, one of the things that draws us to Islam is the understanding 
that we can have a mix and there is no separation between races. Growing up, there was always a white church in a black church from where I grew up. But now we understood because most of us read the biography of Malcolm X or we saw the movie and we hear about his trip to Mecca and how he did not experience racism there. So when we embrace Islam, we are expecting for everyone to receive us with open arms like Malcolm X in the movie. So what do you do if you find some Muslims who are affected by tribalism? They prefer their people from their own tribe over you, even if the person from the tribe is not a practicing Muslim, so to speak. Or what do you do if you find a Muslim that prefers a non-Muslim white American over you because of his skin color? You take it back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah Ta'ala, he said, You will not find a people who believe in Allah and the last day making an alliance with those people who oppose Allah and his messenger even if they be from their fathers, their sons, their brothers, or their tribesmen, they are those whom faith has been written in their hearts. Sheikh Umar Falata, one of the scholars from Nigeria, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him, he said if you find a person that has ethnic racism against his Muslim brother, then know that faith has not set firmly within his heart. So when you take it back to the Quran and the Sunnah, you understand that the standard that Allah Ta'ala has given us is faith, piety, not color, not race. Allah Ta'ala said, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَحْدِيَ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whomever Allah wants to guide, He opens up His chest for Islam. So if Allah gave Islam to this person, he has a virtue over the one who did not get Islam yet, regardless of their color or lineage. You take it back to the Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Inna Allah yu'ti ad dunya man yuhib wa man la yuhib. Indeed, Allah gives the worldly life to those He loves and those He does not love. But He only gives this religion to those that he loves. So if you find some Muslims preferring non-Muslims over you because they may have more status or more wealth, then understand that contradicts the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sheikh Albani, who was white from Albania, he said that the black man who believes in Allah is better than all the Europeans who are upon polytheism and misguidance because he's a believer. So it's based upon your piety, not your color, whether you be white, black from India, Pakistan, any parts of Africa, Arab, it goes back to your heart, not your race as the messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wasalam said, Fadnasu Rajulan. The people are of two types. One who is pious and righteous and noble in the sight of Allah, and one who is wicked and evil and debased in the sight of Allah. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him, he said, There is not one verse in the book of Allah that praises or criticizes anyone based upon their lineage. The last issue that we'll mention is colorism. Colorism is a practice of discrimination by which those with lighter skin are treated better than those with darker skin. Now we know 
what the Quran says about the different colors that man has. Allah Ta'ala said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خُلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And from his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the differing in your languages and your colors. So because we are all different colors, this is a sign of the greatness of our Creator, not a source of division or bragging. But the reality is, this is not how most people in the world look at it. The World Health Organization said, 77% of women in Nigeria bleach their skin. And 40% of women in China, Malaysia, the Philippines, and the Republic of Korea bleach their skin. And there was a poll taken given to young girls in India about skin bleaching. And 90% of them said this is of great importance to them. Now, the irony of it is, while people of color are trying to resemble white people, white people are trying to resemble people of color without anyone being pleased with what Allah Ta'ala has given them. And that's why you find 28 million Americans go to get a tan every year and 27,000 lip enhancements are performed every year. Everyone is trying to look different than how they really look. But the reality is, if you are a parent of a black child, you may have to reinforce in our children that they have value given to them by their creator, regardless of what society says. And you have to do this without going to the extreme and drifting into black nationalism. Now, I would not have said this if I did not have someone that came before me that was better than me that took this approach. And this is the man named Saeed Ibn Musayyib, who was from the best and most knowledgeable of men that came in the second generation of Muslims. So a black man came to visit him one day. And he said to the black man, don't be sad because you're black. For indeed, three of the best people were black. Bilal and Mahji, who was the free slave of Umar ibn Khattab, and Luqman the wise, who was a black Nubian. And what we also see from this is a person does not have to be black to understand the plight that a black person will go through, nor does a person have to be black to present a remedy for the problem. Likewise, we have Ibn al jawzi Now, he is a Muslim scholar from the 12th century. He observed racism and colorism during his time and how it caused some people of African descent to be sad. So because of this, he authored a book called The Virtues of Blacks and Abyssinians. And inside this book, he explained how the virtue of a person is found within his piety, not his race or color. But he also highlighted many virtues found in black people. And he did this so the black community would not feel bad about being black based upon the racism that society puts towards them. And inside this book, he mentions many things. It's a lengthy book. He mentions some of the kingdoms that the black race had upon the earth. And they were more than the other races. He mentions some of the prophets and righteous people who were black, like the prophet sent to the people of the ditch, which is mentioned in Surah Al-Buruj. That prophet that was sent to those people, he was Ethiopian. And also the, the believers who were murdered and burned in the ditch were also Ethiopian. 
He also mentions that Luqman al-Hakim was black. And he mentioned a narration from Ali ibn Abi Talib that says Dhurqanain was also black. One interesting chapter that he has in this book is the chapter about men, Arab men, who preferred black women over white women. Now, this chapter has a bit of importance to it because if you are a black parent and you know that your child is always hearing that their hair is too kinky or their skin is too dark, this can have long-term effects on how they see themselves and their opportunities. So black fathers have to reinforce in their daughters that they are attractive and that many men see them as attractive. And again, I'm not the first person saying this. Ibn al-Jawzi put a whole chapter in his book entitled The Men That Prefer Black Women Over White Women. Because we know that the in society, even back during his time, white women were seen as more attractive than black women by the majority of the people. So he let it be known that no, there are many people, and he mentioned even some of the people even back from the Sahaba, that prefer black women over white women. And this is just a preference. And it's not to have nationalism, but it's to show that no, Allah has placed beauty in you also. And many men recognize that. So he mentioned a narration of an Arab man that fell in love with a black woman. And so his family criticized him for this. And so he wrote some lines of poetry saying, if a beauty spot, you know, the black spot, that's, you know, that's called that a beauty mark. If a beauty mark placed upon an ugly cheek will clothe that cheek with allure and beauty, then how can one be criticized if he sees a woman and her entire essence is like that beauty spot. Meaning that beauty spot is black. If that one black spot can make an entire face attractive, then how about a woman that her entire essence is that black beauty spot? And he has many narrations inside this book like that about the virtues found in blacks and Abyssinians. So how can a black parent give this self-esteem um, self to his child without falling into nationalism. It's simple. Just read the book that Ibn al-Jawzi already laid out for you. Just read the book. So you don't have to begin to go into nationalism and begin to mention evil people just because they were black. Like some people, they want to mention Pharaoh, who was one of the worst people upon the face of the earth. That's not someone that anyone wants to be proud of. But you just read straight from the book that Ibn al-Jawzi laid out and you remind your child that your virtue comes from your piety. But you should know that regardless of what society says about you, Allah has placed virtue in his creatures. And this book has been translated into English so you just get the, you order, um, you, you just get a copy of the book. You just get a copy of the book and you read straight from the book to your children. Now, so this is what we wanted to mention. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad.